Welcome to the guide. So this guide's a little bit different than most of the build guides that you'll find. It's designed for one or two different types of people. Someone who's new to the game and wants to learn more about the game, have a fun character to play, be able to make some of their own decisions about how to develop the character, but uh, without some of the common problems that people who are new to the game experience. Path of Exile is a really complex game and it can be very frustrating to figure out how to make a character that will even survive the story uh, the first time through. In fact, a lot of people give up before they really even get their characters going. So this guide will help you as a new player understand the basics of the game, give you enough of a foundation to make your own choices and explore the game. The other way it can be used is for a, a general purpose ranger leveling system. There are some characters that are strong in the end game, but don't have a good leveling option. And so you can use this as a basis to get through the story and then respec your character into the build that you really want. That's actually why I originally developed this uh, uh, character was to do just that. So there's a minimum number of points invested in the passive skill tree that are required. And so your respec um, later on will be really minimal or maybe nothing at all, depending on what you are looking to play eventually. So that said, this character will give you that foundation that you need to be strong enough to complete the story give you a lot of options about how you want to develop it, how you want to scale damage, what kind of equipment you find and use. Uh, includes a crafting guide so that you can craft all of your equipment. If you want to use trade, uh, that's also an option for you, but it's not necessary. There's no required uniques. This will work with any ascendancy in the ranger class. So it's a very flexible guide uh, that'll help you get through the story. So this is the first skill selection that you're going to need to make in Path of Exile. Um, I want to show you as little of the game as I can, but still give you enough so that you're prepared for making the best choices. So uh, once you enter town for the first time, uh, you're going to get to choose your starting skill. Now when you do start the game as a ranger, you start off with Burning Arrow, and you also get a gem called Pierce. As soon as you uh, acquire these two gems, well, you want to put them in the starter bow and they're linked together. So this pierce uh, is a support gem and it's supporting burning arrow. It means when you fire your attack, it's going to have that additional characteristic of the linked gem, in this case, pierce. Burning arrow is actually a good skill for single target. If you want to do a lot of damage, it's going to set things on fire. And uh, while they're burning, you can run around and avoid attacks. But all things considered, it's really not a very strong skill. And I do not recommend that you continue to use it. And so here's your first skill choice. We have Caustic Arrow, which is a pretty cool skill. Um, when you fire an arrow, it's going to create uh, some area of effect damage, which is a pretty, pretty nice um, skill to use. If you want to use this, you can. It's totally up to you. People generally head towards the poison end of their, the build when they're using a Caustic Arrow, since it's chaos damage here. You can use it. Um, some people love it. Some people love it less. <laughs> it's up to you. We have Galvanic Arrow, which is a type of lightning attack. It's a perfectly fine skill. Um, I don't find it to be all that aesthetically pleasing, uh, but it does work. It's really your decision if you'd like to use it. Um, I don't particularly recommend it. Frostblade's not going to work for us since we're using a bow in this uh, character, a ranger. Ice Shot. Definitely a cool looking skill. Uh, it's, it's hard to build a good Ice Shot character. You can use it as your starting skill if you'd like to, but again, I don't recommend it. 
And finally, we have split arrow. Uh, this is a great um, clearing skill, but yet yeah, still does pretty decent damage. So I really recommend this as the best starting skill. Once you've selected it, you can then replace your burning arrow and your starter bow. You'll have split arrow, link to pierce, and this is a surprisingly strong uh, setup for your starting your character. So by the end of Act 1, your gem links uh, should look something like this. Um, as you've been going through the story, you should be looking for equipment that has linked sockets of the correct color so that you can socket your gems. And uh, just so you know, in the option settings under UI, there's the option to always show sockets. Probably want to have this turned on um, because otherwise you won't see your gems and your links on your equipment unless you actually mouse over them. So turn that on. It's going to save you a little bit of headache from time to time because you really know what your gear is capable of supporting. So as you're going through the story, you're, you're really going to want to find a three-linked uh, green socket item. So if it's boots or gloves or helmet, body armor, does not matter. Um, I don't actually recommend that you link uh, use the links in your bow because you're going to be switching this bow every couple of acts, or maybe even more. And so if you have to always get a bow that has the correct links for you, it's going to be a real headache. So look for a helmet or gloves, body armor, boots that have your right links. Um, for Act 1, you're going to be mainly using your starter bow, so this might just work fine for you, but after Act 1, uh, probably move these gem links to another piece of equipment. So our links here, we have uh, our main skill. Um, I recommend Split Arrow, could be Caustic Arrow, it could actually be any of the bow skills, that's really your decision. Uh, split Arrow feels the strongest to me, so that's what I recommend. That's going to be linked to Mirage. Mirage Archer is great. It's going to create that Mirage Archer above your head. That's going to do some fighting for you. It's a bit of additional passive damage. So while you're busy avoiding damage and staying safe, um, your Mirage Archer is uh, helping you out. It's going to be good throughout the entire game. And we have added cold damage. Personally, I think cold damage is one of the best damage types in the game. Uh, it's chilling things, it makes them slower. If you get enough cold damage, things will be frozen, they'll shatter. Um, it's just really a cool uh, type of damage. So those are our three links. If you only have a two link, that's okay. Um, split arrow and mirage archer, or split arrow and added cold, depending on if you want more damage or you want a little more automation. Personally, I'll always go Mirage Archer, but that's that's your decision. If you do get three links, this is how you want to have them set up. Uh, for your Ballista, okay, we've got two links probably. If we do have the third, well, we can um, include um, additional damage gem. But we have um, the skill itself, and then we have the added coal damage, which is going to make it more powerful. All right, in Act 2, we're going to get a few more gems. We're going to be able to link those to our existing skills to make them stronger. And uh, as we are going through the story, we're probably going to pick up some better equipment. We're going to be on the lookout for items that have three and four sockets of the correct colors that we need. Um, we'd love to have uh, one with three linked green sockets and one with four linked green sockets. Um, if you're not finding a four links quite yet or the right colors, that's okay. Uh, three links still going to work okay, but going to be keeping an eye out for something like that. 
This is just uh, some random gear that I happen to have. You don't need this unique, uh, not, not recommending it. Whatever you happen to find in game. I've upgraded my bow and you can uh, take a look at the crafting section to see how um, I crafted this bow. New gems we're going to get. Um, one is faster attacks. It's going to be a quest reward. You can uh, select this. Um, there's vicious projectiles. Now this is a quest reward for the same one as faster attacks. So you're going to have to just choose one of these and then you can buy the other from the vendor. All the quest rewards you can buy from the vendor, so don't feel like you missed your opportunity to pick it up. We're also going to get Herald of Ice. That's a quest reward as well. There's a few different options there, but um, Herald of Ice, I think, is probably your best bet. These other skills are what you started with from Act 1. Your Ballista, your Split Arrow, or Caustic Arrow, or whatever bow skill you chose and dash. So you're going to be putting these links together. Um, we've got our dash just as by itself. That's our movement skill. We have Herald of Ice. Okay, that's just going to be linked by itself. No other uh, links are necessary. We're going to put our Ballista in our three green link. That's the Shrapnel Ballista, it's added cold, and it's faster attacks. This is really going to be a powerful uh, secondary skill for you. We've got Split Arrow, Caustic Arrow, whatever bow skill. We're going to add Mirage Archer, great skill, we always want that. Added cold damage, great elemental damage, and vicious projectiles. Um, it's adding more chaos damage over time, physical damage over time, projectile jacket. This is a, a good skill for us pretty much no matter how we end up scaling our damage. That's the gem links. Uh, we probably have this all set up by the end of Act 2. So let's take a look at our gems for Act 3. We're going to get a number of new gems here, and we're going to have to shuffle some of the um, arrangement of these for the skills that we've been using. So we're going to have to look for equipment that's got the right links, the right colors, the right sockets, um, things like that. The gems we're going to get, um, you're going to get something called Poacher's Mark. It's a quest reward. There's others that you can choose. This is probably the best for this particular character. Now, right now, this is Path of Exile 3.11, 3.12 is in about a week. This gem is changing. It will no longer work in the same way, and um, I will update the guide depending on um, what happens with those changes. We're going to get our main uh, skill, Scourge Arrow. Fantastic skill, really fun to play with in my opinion. Um, different sort of skill though, it's a channeling skill, so generally the best way to use it is uh, to just tap the attack or give it about a one second channel to get the most out of it. Uh, take a look at the gameplay section a little bit later on for some of the basics on that. We've got infused channeling. Since we're using a uh, channeling skill with Scourge Arrow, infused channeling is a great um, choice for this. It gives us some more power and some more defense. Second wing, uh, wind, great support, and we're going to link this to dash so that we can use our dash um, more effectively. And anger. Anger is nice, it's going to give us some flat fire damage to our attacks. Uh, for this character, flat damage is nice because it's not requiring that you have any particular gear or you've decided to scale your character in any particular way. Uh, it's just going to always be helpful and, well, setting things on fire, well, that's just fun. So here's what it's going to look like when we start linking these up. We've got our existing skills going into Act 3, Herald Device, Dash, Shrapnel Ballista with its supports, and Split Arrow with its supports. 
So split arrow, we're finished with. We're gonna swap in scourge arrow instead. Scourge arrow, mirage archer, great support, always want it. Um, added cold damage. And now vicious projectiles, we're not gonna use. We're going to swap in infused channeling. We were using a three or four green linked item for this uh, primary skill before. Now we're adding that fourth blue socket. So you will need a different piece of equipment to make this work, uh, but it's really worth making this change. If you can't find uh, a piece of gear with the right links on it right away, uh, the right sockets, socket colors, uh, going with a three link will still work okay, but keep an eye out for one of those four links to drop. You'll, you'll find it before too long. Uh, again, this is just some unique item I happen to um, have on hand. I'm not recommending it, although it does work pretty well for this character. Um, any, any body armor that you find will work. You're looking for life and resistances. For our shrapnel ballista, now we're going to go to a four link, added cold, faster attacks, and we're going to move our vicious projectiles over onto the shrapnel ballista. So we got four links there. It's a, it's a pretty strong skill. For dash, uh, we want to link our second wind to it. Reduces cooldown. Um, it's just going to make the skill feel better. You're, it's going to be up more often when you need it in, uh, in fighting situations where you want to evade attacks. Um, just a great combination of gems there. Got Herald of Ice. Um, it's giving us some flat damage, cold damage, best element in the game, in my opinion. And we've got Anger. That's our flat fire damage. Hey, let's set things on fire. Why not? And that's what our gem setup is going to look like by the end of Act 3. Let's take a look at the passive skill tree development for this character. Now, as a new player, the first time you see the passive skill tree, it's it's going to be hard to really comprehend. Um, some ways it's quite simple; you, all the points describe what they do. Uh, but cons deciding what you're going to choose and how you're going to get to those places on the tree is really critical for a good character. A lot of new players, this is where things go wrong. Um, if you're not making good decisions here, even early on with your character, you can really end up with something that's just not really going to work very well. So I'll give you enough of a foundation that your character will work for the entire story. And at a certain point, it's really going to be up to you how you want to continue developing the character. So don't worry about everything that's going on here. Let me just show you how to get started. Alright, so starting in Ranger, we have a couple of different paths that we can start off on. But the thing with Ranger is we don't get a lot of life in this area of the tree. So if you see life on the tree and you're close to it, you probably want to go and take it. So that's the first thing we're going to do, is to ensure our early survival in the game, which is pretty challenging. The first few points are not going to damage at all, which might seem a little weird, but your starting skill is actually pretty strong, so this will work just fine. Okay, we take a little attack speed here, which is nice. More survivability. Up here, and now we're starting to take a little bit of damage. Uh, depending on how far you get for Act 1, you may even get on over to this node here, which again, more damage, more life, movement speed. This is every good thing that we want for this character. And that's probably where you're going to get to by the end of Act 1. You've collected some pretty good defenses, um, some pretty good offense, and the character should be feeling pretty solid at this point. You've got your skills in place. So starting Act 2, we're going to take this damage on the top part. It's a little bit more general purpose. These are crit nodes which, if you're going for a critical type build, 
you might want to take these, but that's a little harder to build and for a new character early in your development process, they're probably less helpful than these general purpose nodes in the top. Okay, take some more damage, and now we are down here. Uh, damage, movement speed, uh, some stats, all good things for us. Just one point to invest, so it's a really nice node here. We're going to continue coming across the tree, and here we get uh, kind of an important defensive node. It's going to give us evasion, it's going to give us some elemental resistances, um, and it's just a, a nice all around defensive node. Probably by the end of Act 2, you'll make it over to the side of the tree here. You may even have one more point. Uh, we'll pick up the development in a moment, but uh, by the end of Act 2, you should be here. Have not added any new damage, but you've taken these important um, defensive nodes. Actually, there's a little bit of damage here as well. So you're continuing to fill out the offensive and defensive capabilities of your character. So starting Act 3, um, now you have a choice. Uh, you have damage down here, Master Fletcher. This is all damage uh, for our character. Um, and we have Herbalism, which is a really good life node here. So at this point, and you're here in Act 3 probably, and you're going to feel like you either need more survivability or you need more damage. It's your choice. If you want more damage, that's, that's great. Come on down and take this bow damage to Master Fletcher. Once you have that, then you can come down and head on over to Herbalism. Or you could do it the other way around. You're here at the beginning of Act 3 and you're thinking, my survivability is not so hot. All right, we're going to buff it up with some life first and then take the damage. It's only a few points either way, so uh, totally your choice. And then finally, we're going to take these nodes for acrobatics. Acrobatics will give us um, dodge, dodge for attacks, dodge for spells. It's a nice defensive layer, but be aware that when you take acrobatics, it's reducing the amount of armor, energy shield, and block that you have. These are other defensive mechanisms in the game, so acrobatics is a really nice um, and powerful node here for us, but it does reduce the effectiveness of other types of defenses. As you continue to develop your character, you're probably not going to want to go for armor. You probably not want to go for energy shield. You probably not want to go for block because, well, we've taken some of their power away. What we do want is, well, more evasion and more dodge. So that's the foundation of this character. Um, probably you're here about the act of, at end of Act 3, maybe into Act 4. And this is enough damage from the tree to actually finish the entire story. You don't have to invest even one other point into damage for your main damage skill, and you can survive the whole story. You're going to want to add more, of course, and so we'll talk about next how to continue developing your tree from here. Now, we do have enough damage on the tree actually to finish the story, um, but we definitely will need more defenses, more life uh, to make it enjoyable. So that's something we'd have to take no matter what. The damage you choose to take is really your choice. You can take general bow damage, you can take elemental damage, um, or you can specialize in poison. You're going to go poison, which is a really cool skill, really good skill in Path of Exile. You want to go all in on poison. Uh, so don't just take a little bit and then take um, general bow damage in addition. Um, find as many poison nodes as you can. You don't have to do it that way, but that's usually what's going to work best. 
All right, so uh, most new players open up the passive skill tree, and it's like, oh my god, well, <laughs> what am I going to do with all of this? Um, it is a little daunting. Um, if you use a tool like Path of Building, um, they actually make it pretty easy for you. You can just check this box. It's going to highlight node power. Uh, what are your best offensive and defensive nodes? Offensive nodes are red, and the brighter the red, the stronger they are. Defensive nodes are blue, and the more blue they are, well, of course, the stronger they are. A couple of them are purple here, and they have a combination of damage and life. That's a pretty nice node right there. Okay, So we can use this to kind of decide where we want to go on the tree. You only get so many points. Uh, it may feel like a lot at the beginning, but they start coming slower and slower as time goes along. And the last few points that you uh, acquire as a player take quite a long time. So each of these skill points is actually incredibly precious. We really don't want to waste them. Like, well, maybe there's a great node way over here. Um, sure, we'd love to have it, but do we want to spend one, two, three, four, five, six, all these different points just to get there? It might be okay if there's some really good stuff along the way that we're going to take. Uh, but generally, we're not going to be able to travel too far on the tree and have a good build. Alright, so um, we're always looking out for life nodes. We don't get a lot as a ranger, so wherever you find them, you probably are going to have to head over to them. Blood Drinker up here is a really good one. Uh, we're already taking Herbalism, quite a good one. We took our life evasion nodes at the beginning of the tree. Uh, we've got a little bit of life here. This is a nice node. Also gives us some evasion and some damage. Yeah, it's a pretty, pretty cool node. And down here, if we get all the way to this area, bottom of the tree, there's Golem's Blood, which is also a really good life node. We've got a few more here. So uh, if you're in this area, you've got some options. But just in general, um, there's not a lot of life. And now if you don't want to load up Path of Building, this is uh, too much to bother with, I don't blame you, you can just use the search function in the in-game passive tree. At the top of the screen there's a search bar, you can just type in life for example. And it'll look a little different than this, uh, but it's the same basic thing. So here it's highlighting all the nodes that have the word life in them. And so you can look around and see what it is you're going to take so that this character can stay alive. All right. For poison, same thing. Do a search in game on your passive tree for poison. It's going to highlight some nodes for you. Um, right here we've got two poison wheels that are very close to points you've already spent. We we're always going to be happy about that because um, spending these points traveling to what we really want to take are a big, uh, you know, they don't do much for us. So if it's close by, that's where we want to go. Now we've probably already figured out that we want to take, um, let's see, where is it? Blood Drinker. There's our, our life node, which we don't get many probably want to go up this way to grab it, so hey, we're right here. We'll take this poison wheel, fatal toxins, great wheel for poison, and then right over here, Hunter's Gambit. So here's the thing, poison damage in Path of Exile is chaos damage. So anything that improves chaos damage uh, and damage over time, which poisons also, is going to help our poison characters. So this doesn't actually have the word poison in it, but chaos damage over time, okay, that fits it. Um, uh, general generic damage over time with bow skills, perfect for us. Skill effect duration, the elongates the length of time poison is active. Could be good or bad depending on your build, but generally going to be good. And increased damage with bows. They're just this is all good for us, um, and especially if we're going poison. One thing you do need to watch out for is these nodes which have kind of a split purpose or a specific purpose. So this is damage with daggers 
It's also got some poison stuff in there, so you might want to take it, but it's not going to be as beneficial since we're using a bow. We're going poison, we're going to take this wheel, we're going to take this wheel for sure, and then we're right here with this great combined offensive-defensive node. We're just too close not to take it, probably. Going on down, we've got um, Swift Venoms here, another good poison node. Um, a little further to the left, Toxic Strikes, a good one as well. Uh, I'm not sure what these are, but you're probably not going to make this down. Poison with Dirty Techniques is actually quite a good node. So if you do end up over here, uh, this might be something you'd want to take. And then, of course, you're over here, so we're going to head right out and up to Golem's Blood. Can't not take that life if we're over here already. So that's just a few possibilities with um, poison. Uh, if you're not going poison, well, you can just search for bow on your in-game passive tree, and it's going to highlight anything that's specific to bows and bow damage. Not a lot of them around, but there are some, um, and so that's really going to help you. Just look in the areas where you're planning on pathing to and see what it's got to offer. Like I said, just with this base tree, you've already got enough damage on the tree to finish the story. So anything else you take is just going to make it better. So don't stress over picking exactly the right thing. You're also going to get a reasonable number of respect points. You can find orbs of regret. Um, those will allow you to respect your tree um, as much as you want to. Um, so that's nothing set in stone here, but this is a these nodes here are going to be really commonly taken for a ranger. There might be different builds, might path to them in a different order or different way. Um, so you might have to do a little bit of respecking later on, depending on how far you want your character to go. But it's pretty easy to do. So last thing is ascendancy. So we have three ranger ascendancies. Uh, we've got Deadeye, we've got Pathfinder, and we've got uh, Raider. So let's select uh, Deadeye up here. And so Deadeye is generally considered the weakest of the three ascendancies, although um, some people really like it. We've got up here um, Ricochet, which allows our attacks to chain. And uh, I don't know how well this would actually work with Scourge Arrow. I have not tested it. Um, but that's one of the sort of defining features here on the Deadeye ascendancy. Uh, if you have skills that chain well or really benefit from chaining, it's gonna your attack will hit one mob and then it will um, split off and then hit another one. That's a pretty great way to increase clear speed and overall damage. Uh, some mechanics in the game, each time a skill chains becomes more powerful. Uh, so this is can be a really really powerful node if you're built for it correctly probably not going to be great for this particular build the way I've presented it. Later on in the game you may um, find something that does work for it though. The other thing that's pretty great here in Deadeye is Gathering Winds, <coughs> which gives you um, Tailwind. And Tailwind, basically every time you use a skill, it increases your action speed. So you'll move faster, you'll attack faster, um, kind of everything gets better. It's a really cool skill. Now, the reason why Deadeye is not so popular is because you can actually get Tailwind on boots now. Uh, you can craft it. It's a crafting process that will get you Tailwind on boots. Uh, not particularly easy to craft and probably quite expensive. I haven't looked at prices. So, um, if people are people are a little hesitant to choose Deadeye for those reasons. It's got a lot of projectile damage. It's got a lot of good things going for it. Uh, so it's you can choose it. You can enjoy it. It'll work. After that, we have put Pathfinder. Pathfinder is um, has a lot of flask effectiveness. It will automatically refill your flasks. It will not use flasks. It will make your flasks more powerful. Flasks and Pathfex are a huge, hugely powerful item. Um, pretty much everybody is using them continuously. Um, so all those utility flasks that improve your defenses, your life flask, mana flask, quicksilver for movement speed, 
um, just get really strong with Pathfinder. And the other item here, which is really great, is Nature's Reprisal. And this allows us to perforate, perforate and say that word right, <laughs> spread <laughs> poison um, that you've applied to an enemy. Um, this is great for clear speed if you have a poison-oriented build. So if you're building poison, you pretty much have to go Pathfinder. I mean, it's it's the it's just it's built for it. And then finally, we have Raider. Raider has um, Onslaught, which improves your attack speed, uh, your movement speed, and then Enhanced um, Onslaught. So it basically makes your character faster and stronger, basically. Um, that's pretty nice. And it's also got some Frenzy Charge generation, which can improve your um, attack power. And I believe we've got some Evasion. Uh, yeah, we've got some Evasion there as well. So you've got a nice collection of offense and defense. It's a fast character. Um, not super popular ascendancy. Actually, all of Ranger is not that popular. Um, used to be a lot more popular, and some of the skills were adjusted and aren't quite at the level of power they once were. Uh, or at least other ascendancies, other uh, classes have kind of eclipsed Ranger still a good class. It's still a nice, fast-moving class. I think it's very satisfying to play because it's really going to rely on your skill to control the character and, and make it work, make it happen. It's not a minion build where you got 40 minions running around, killing everything around you, and you're, it's kind of like, you know, people will call it a walking simulator. Uh, that can be fun, too. I love it, actually, mainly when I play, but... Uh, for like a direct damage build, um, Ranger, I think, is the best way to go. Uh, so here's my character here, and I've actually taken off some of the uh, gear for another one of my test characters. Uh, but these gloves, this quiver, chest, bows, uh, these are exactly what I've been using to test out this character build. We have our Scourge Arrow um, in the body armor and our Ballista in the gloves. Um, I just chose this body armor because it's got a bit of movement speed. Um, since I played through the story a number of times now, I wanted as much movement speed as possible. But it's got a few other good things for the, the build here as well. Um, you really don't need this specific chest at all. Any chest, any body armor with uh, life resistances uh, is gonna be good for you and your character. Same thing with the gloves. Um, they do help this character a little bit, but for the most part, uh, ordinary equipment that you find throughout the story with life and resistances is going to work well enough. Uh, you want to look for more life and resistances on your belt and your rings, your amulet, helmet, boots. You need to have movement speed on boots. Um, that movement speed is one of those things that not only makes the game feel much better to play, but also um, helps you with defense because you can run around uh, and avoid attacks and get out of danger and all kinds of good stuff like that. So movement speed on your boots is pretty crucial. Quiver, I've just been using whatever happened to drop for me. I was always looking for some life on there. A little bit of extra damage for a bow would be nice, but uh, pretty much just took whatever the game gave me through RNG. So for the bows, um, this latest character actually finally bought some um, uniques and wanted to give it a try with that. Um, they work quite well. I bought this 5 link bow at the end of Harvest for 5 Chaos, and it's pretty nice on this build. Absolutely not necessary, but if you do want to trade, um, there are options like this. At the beginning of the league, it's definitely going to be more expensive. Um, just at the end of harvest, not really any end of the league. No one's going to really want an item like this. Same thing with the quiver. It's just got a chance to freeze on here, which is kind of a fun mechanic in the game. Uh, it's not necessarily a good quiver for this build at all, but uh, it's just fun for me to play with. All right, so this character is actually uh, in Act 7. Um, I'm in Act 1 town right now. I don't want to show you too much of the game. Uh, I bought these two bows off of the vendor. 
They're just uh, ordinary items that you'll find um, when you get to that part in the story. So whatever town you're in, um, you can just buy a bow. To do the crafting, you'll also need a rustic sash. So while you're leveling, look out for rare ones of these that drop. They're going to be the best option for you. It does not matter what stats they have on them at all, because we're just using them as a crafting material, actually. Now, if you don't find a rare one, um, you can usually buy one from the vendor. Um, in fact, here we've got a rustic sash that I could buy for two scrolls of wisdom. It's about as cheap as anything can be in the game. And then we have got two options. We can turn it magic with Orb of Transmutation, which we're going to get these all the time. They're going to drop constantly throughout the leveling process. And then uh, more rare um, is the alchemy. So if you've got an elk, you can go ahead and use it. It's going to turn this item rare. And then when you use the vendor recipe, you're going to make a, a slightly better version of this bow. But if you were to use a transmute, right click the crafting material, click the item, left click the item. It's turned blue now. Add some random mods on it, basically. We don't care what the mods are for in this case. Um, so I'm going to scour off my magic, and I'm going to use an elk instead, because that's going to give me a slightly better bow after I'm done. Again, don't care about the stats on here, it's not important. Now the bow, you want to um, make sure that it's 20% quality before you craft it. Uh, after you craft it, it'll be magic or rare, and it just simply costs more uh, blacksmith whetstones to get it to 20% quality. You can quality it after you craft it, but it's just going to be a little more expensive to do it. So in this case, I've already done the quality on these, so um, I don't need to do anything. I got my bow. I got my rare or magic rustic sash. I'm going to take one more blacksmith whetstone. All right, those are my three items. Mm -hmm. I'm going to sell it to a vendor. And this is called a vendor recipe. The correct combination of items um, will yield a special reward. In this case, it's going to be a bow, magic bow with increased physical damage. That's definitely a nice stat for us, so we want that. If I were to use a um, magic sash, it would have done the same thing. It just would have given me a lower value for increased physical damage. So rare is definitely preferred, but if you don't have one, not the end of the world. So after I hit accept, I'm going to have that bow, and I actually want right to be equipped. You can see it's got the increased physical damage. Now, if you have the currency, you can use an org, orb of augmentation on it. It's going to add, keep it magic, but add one more mod. And we got actually a hybrid, which gives, looks like there's three, but actually those last two are combination. Chance to poison on hit and increase damage with poison. Hey, well that's pretty cool because actually I'm going poison with this particular version. So that's something I actually needed. It's pretty unusual that you actually get something that you really want, um, so this was good RNG for me. And then, if you've got it, you can use a regal orb. Regal orbs really aren't worth very much, so you might as well use them. Um, they're help very helpful in crafting, but we just don't use a lot of them, so they don't have a lot of value. If you got one, just go ahead and use it. It'll turn it rare, add one more mod. And now we got increased critical strike chance. Critical strike, not that helpful on this character, um, so it might help a little bit, give it a little bit of extra damage occasionally, but for the most part, um, we got two good mods here. We got the increased physical damage, that's really a good one, and the chance to poison, that's nice. Increased damage with poison, that's nice. So actually not at all a bad result. All right, and so, this is a um, unique bow I bought just uh, to try it out instead of the regular crafting. One thing you can do is you can check the relative power of items with the tooltip DPS. I put my mouse cursor over the skill I'm using. It's going to show me uh, an approximate DPS, 1434. It's not that accurate and 
Um, it, it can really mislead you in certain cases, but it's not a bad way to compare two weapons in an equal kind of a situation. So with this bow I just crafted, 1434, if I swap in this death harp, I got uh, 1516. So death harp, it's saying a little bit better. Um, so damage isn't really going to be too much difference between these. This does have actually some unique qualities for being a unique item, but um, I'm not going to talk about that one right now. So that's my bow, and that's the kind of bow that I recommend that you craft for this build. The other way you can go is with essences. So you'll find monsters trapped in essences throughout the game, and they'll drop these items. You can use these as crafting materials as well. The nice is it's going to have a guaranteed mod. When you um, use a that augmentation on this and the regal, um, it's just choosing from this large pool of potential mods. You never know what you're going to get. The vendor recipe, you know exactly what you're going to get, but the rest, totally random. So essence is um, similar kind of deal. So certain types of items will be guaranteed a certain kind of mod. So for example, um, this is going to add some flat cold damage. That's not bad. Spell damage, that's going to add um, minions deal extra damage, not helpful for this character. Um, adds fire damage, damage to spells. I don't know if I'm going to have any essences that are really going to be helpful. Um, I'll use one just so you can see what the process looks like, even though none of these um, look that great for us. Increase critical strike. Um, increased attack speed. No, that's a good one. We like that. Um, essence of Zeal. So I'll right click the essence, and then I'm going to click the bow. It becomes rare with a random collection of mods. Only one of them will be that guaranteed mod, which is the increased attack speed. That's nice. We got some flat lightning damage, we got some dexterity, we got some cold resist. Um, not a great result. But we can check it. For the other bow, the current equip bow, it's uh, 1434. Swapping it, it's uh, 1621. It's actually slightly better. So that's not too bad. Um, I think this, there's some tricky things though. This adds 4 to 51 lightning damage. I don't 100% know if that will apply to our Scourge Arrow or not. So it's the kind of thing where you can test it out and see how well it works for you. I'm going to go with our increased, our regular uh, first one. I like increased physical damage more. I might be wrong about comparing these, but uh, you can just test it out and see how it feels for you. Right, so any other gear you pick up and fill these the rest of these slots, you're just looking for life and resist. You always want to check your resist on the character screen. Press C, or you can choose it from this menu. Character screen. Just closed it. Uh, click defenses, and it's going to show you what your resistances are at. You want fire, cold, and lightning to all be 75%. It's going to sh if you if you're over 75% from your equipment, it's going to show it in parentheses, but it's going to stop counting it past 75. So you want to get all of your resistances to 75, pretty much starting on Act 6 and beyond. If you don't, you're just going to die a lot. Um, so anytime you can improve these, get them up to 75, that's pretty much your first priority in terms of staying alive. Second priority is just flat life on items. Anything that's got flat something to maximum life is going to be good for you. The bigger the number, well, the better, obviously. And of course, on the boots, you want movement speed. That's the that's huge in this game. So let's take a look at some gameplay for this character. Um, before I show you uh, what the skills look like, um, I want to show you how I set up my controls. Um, it's really important that your controls feel comfortable for you and that. Uh, you're not hurting your hands while you're playing the game. So 
you're feeling pain, discomfort, um, try adjusting how you're using your controls because it can really make a big difference and uh, really make your game playing a lot more enjoyable throughout your whole life. So for the secondary skill, I always put this uh, in the middle here. Uh, to change it, you just click the icon and then choose the skill that you'd like to change it to. I have my dash um, here, my movement skill, and I always put my main skill down here. Now, this is mapped to the side mouse button that I use. Uh, it's normally by default mapped to the middle mouse button. I find that really uncomfortable, so I map that to the side mouse button. And instead of T, this is mapped to spacebar. So while I'm playing, I've got my main fingers on my left hand on the number keys on the keyboard so that I can activate my flasks. And I use my thumb to activate the main skill on the spacebar. I find this to be really comfortable and a really enjoyable way to um, set things up. Um, to make these changes, you open up the options menu go to input. Uh, <clears throat> this skill here is your bound skill 2. It's already mouse 4, which is that side mouse button. You can just click it and then press the button or key that you want to change it to. And then I go down here to bound skill 8. That's normally T. And you can see that I've mapped it to spacebar. Um, probably when you make this change, it's going to complain down here that there's a skill that's not mapped. So just look to the list until you find it. Um, for me, I believe it was uh, close all user interface. That was spacebar originally, and since I overwrote it, there was nothing. Just click it and choose some other random character on the keyboard that's not being used. Save and close. You're all set to play. Alright, so I'm going to take you, uh, try to show you as little of the game as I can here, but I do want to show you a zone and what the skills look like. First skill I'll show you is the Ballista, which is our um, secondary damage skill. Um, you can drop up to three. Um, they don't live a long time, they don't have a lot of health, so you have to recast them fairly often. Um, but here's what that skill looks like. It does a reasonable amount of damage, and it's all automated, so while they're busy uh, taking care of business, you can go and avoid attacks, and stay out of range, move ahead in the zone. Works quite effectively. Now our main skill, Scourge Arrow, uh, if I just tap the attack, going to fire once. It's going to create this um, area here. Say goodbye to him for a moment. And that pod's going to explode, release those thorns, which do a lot of really good area damage. It's a channeling skill, so if I hold it down, it's going to charge it up, and then the attack will be more powerful. You could see that it left a whole string of pods, so you get a lot more area damage out of it. Um, that little effect you're seeing is the infusion, which is a defensive quality. Um, we also need to make sure that our auras and heralds are activated. You can only do this outside of town. So you just use the key to toggle it on, and that's going to add additional damage to your attacks. So let's take a look at what it looks like. Throw up some ballistas. pretty much clean up the area all by themselves. Throw in my Scourge Arrow as well. Let's fight this rare here. Not too bad. Dash. You to move around. Great in battle, great for just getting you across the zone. Mirage Archer just keeps taking 
shots. Um, it's much slower attacking, but is a really good source of automated and supplemental damage. You just have to hit something first time, and then um, it will keep fighting for you automatically. There it is. What's up? 